5.2, Properties of Radical Expressions and Rational ex Exponents. Um, when we are dealing with these radicals, we're dealing with roots. So we have the nth root of a number. Um, the n is the index. That's the little tiny number on the outside of the radical sign. And then the a, or the number that's underneath the radical sign, is your radicand. So n is the little number, a is your number underneath the radical sign. Um, the whole idea is you want to find the number that goes into the a n times. So if we look at one of our first examples, example 1a, we have the fourth root of 81. Easy way to do this is find the factors of 81. So just find the, pr the prime factorization of 81 first. 81 is 9 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3. So if we write this, we have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. We're looking for a set of 4. We have a set of 4 here, so 3 is our solution. And because that index is an even number, this 3 can either be positive or negative. So it's plus or minus 3, that's our answer. Now, if this was an odd index, let's say like example B, the cube root of negative 125. Because it's an odd num um, index, you're going to keep the sign underneath the radical sign. So we're going to do the same thing that we did on, on the last one. We're going to find the prime factorization of 125. You know that 5 times 25 is 125, and 25 is 5 times 5. So if we write this out, we have 5 times 5 times 5. We're going to have an odd index, so we keep the sign. And then what happens three times? That 5, so negative 5, is our solution for this one. For example, C, we have the sixth root of negative 729. Well, this is not even possible because you have an even index with an odd um, radicand. So, or sorry, an even index with a negative radicand. Because that negative is underneath the radical sign and our, our, our index is even, this is not possible. So our answer is no real roots. No real roots. For example, D, we have the fourth root of negative 256. So again, because that index is even and we have that negative underneath the radical, this is not possible. So there are no real roots. If we look at our next example, E, we have the sixth root of 1. We have an uh, uh, even index, so we're going to have a plus or minus, and then the radical of 1 is always 1, so it's plus or minus 1. For F, we have the cube root of 125. So because that index is an odd number, that number on the inside is just going to stay positive. So when we t find the prime factor, you Prime factorization of 125, we know already that it's 5 and 25, and 25 is 5 and 5. So this can be written as 5 times 5 times 5. We have a group of 3, so our answer is just positive 5. So remember, if the index is odd, we're going to keep the sign on the number that's our radicand. Our radicand is positive, so our answer is going to be positive. If we look at our next set of examples, for example, 2a, we have the cube root of 16. Now, with this one, we're going to do the same thing, same method. Find the prime factorization of 16. We know 16 is 4 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So we can rewrite this as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. We're looking for a group of 3. So we have three twos here, but we have one left over. So whatever's left over is going to stay underneath that radical sign. 
because we have the three twos that match up, we're going to pull one out. We're going to keep the cube root of whatever's left over, which is just the two. So two cube root two is our solution here. If we look at example B, we have the square root of 25 over, the, over 9. This is the same thing as the square root of 25 over the square root of 9. We know that 25 is 5 and 5, and 9 is 2 and 2. Your invisible uh, indexes here are 2, so because we have two fives and two twos, we're going to do 5 over 2, and we'll be done. For example, C, we have the cube root of 27x to the sixth power. When we are working with variables underneath these radical signs, that index and the exponent divide. So we're actually going to keep the x and do 6 divided by 3. If we had any remainders, that would stay as our exponent with the x underneath the radical sign. So we're going to do the same thing that we did in the past. Find the prime factorization of 27. We know that's 3 and 9. 9 is 3 and 3. So this is going to be 3 times 3 times 3. Now the cube root of x to the 6th is the same thing as saying x to the 6th divided by the 3rd. So we're going to divide those. We have a group of 3 here. So this is going to be 3x squared. For D, we have the fourth root of 16x to the fourth. So again, we can also separate these and do the fourth root of 16 times the fourth root of x to the fourth. Totally up to you. When we do this, prime factorization of the 16 is 4 times 4. 4 is 2 and 2. So this can be rewritten as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now that cube root of x to the fourth, we're going to do x to the fourth divided by the fourth, which is just x to the first. We're looking for a group of four twos, so we do have a group of four twos, so we're just going to have two, and then we have that x to the first, or just two x. For our next example, we have the cube root of x cubed over 7. So again, we can rewrite this as the cube root of x cubed over the cube root of 7. The cube root of the x cubed is just x. However, you cannot take the cube root of 7. You also cannot leave a radical in the denominator of your fraction. So in order to get rid of it, you would multiply both the top and the bottom by that radical the amount of times that you see for your index. So our index here is 3, so you want to see, have the cube root of 7 times the cube root of 7 times the cube root of 7 three times, so that way it cancels out that cube root. Well, however many times you added it to the bottom, you're going to do to the top as well. So we're going to do the cube root of 7 times the cube root of 7 times x. When we do this, the x is going to stay on the outside, and then the cube root of 7 times the cube root of 7, we're just multiplying those 7s and keeping the cube root on, on top of it. So it's going to be the cube root of 49, and that's going to be the, all over 7. So the, multiplying that cube root of 7 by the cube root of 7 times the cube root of 7 will actually cancel out that radical to where the only thing that you have left is what was underneath that radical in the beginning. So we're just going to be left with x cube root 49 all over 7. For f, we have the fourth root of x to the eighth power over the fourth root of 3. So again, that fourth root of x to the eighth power is just x to the eighth divided by the fourth, and it's going to be x squared over the fourth root of three. So because we have that fourth root of three on the denominator, we have to multiply both top and bottom by the fourth root of three three more times. And then because we did that to the bottom, we do it to the top as well. So on the bottom, we're going to be left with the f just the 3, 
and on the top we're going to be left with x squared. Now 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, so this is going to be the fourth root of 27. So x cubed times the fourth root of 27 all over 3. When we look at g, we have the cube root of x to the seventh times the cube root of x squared. When we multiply these, it's the same exact thing as putting the cube root, if the radical is the same, we can do this, the cube root of x to the seventh times x squared. So remember, when we're multiplying variables raised to powers, we are keeping the variable and adding the powers if the bases are the same. Bases are the same here, they're both x, so we're going to keep the x, add the 7 and the 2, it's going to be x to the 9th underneath that cube root sign. We have the cube root of x to the 9th, remember divide those, um, that um, exponent by the index, so 9 divided by 3 is 3, and this is just x cubed. For h, we have 36w cubed underneath the square root sign. So again, we can separate this as the square root of 36 times the square root oops, of w cubed. So we know that square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of w cubed, well, that is the same thing as saying w cubed divided by 2. 2 goes into 3 one time with 1 left over, so that's going to be 6w square root w. Remember, if you have anything left over, it stays underneath the radical sign. If we look at the next set of examples, we're dealing with rational exponents. These rational exponents can be written as uh, radicals. The way that this works is that your bottom number, that denominator of the fraction, is your index then your top number is the exponent on the term that it's being raised to. So if we look at example 3a, we have negative 125 raised to the 2 thirds power. So again, that 2 is going to stay with the 125, that 3 is going to go out front of the radical. So this is going to be the cube root of negative 125 raised to the second power. Now there's two ways of writing this, like this, or the cube root of negative 125 squared, all under the radical. Totally up to you. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. I like work working with the first because it's a lot easier to take a, um, the prime factorization of a smaller number. If you worked with the one on the right here, you're going to have to do negative 125 squared first, then find the, the prime factorization of that, and then take the cube root of it. So in this case, I'm going to work with this one. We're going to find the prime factorization of negative 125. We know it's 5 times 25, and, fi and 25 is 5 times 5. So we have the negative there. The cube root of negative 125 is negative 5, and then we're going to square that. So this is going to give us a positive 25. So it's, again, it's a lot easier to work with this compared to doing negative 125 squared, which is 15,625, then finding the prime factorization of that, and then um, doing the cube root of it. So again, it's just my preference. If you want to do it the other way, per perfectly fine. Totally up to you. For B, we have 64 raised to the one-third power. So again, that 1 is going to stay with the 64. That 3 is going to be the index. So this is the cube root of 64. Find the prime factorization of 64. We have 8 and 8. 8 is 4 and 2. The 4 is 2 and 2. So 4, 2, 2, 2. Okay, so this is going to give us 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. We're looking for a group of 3. We have 2 groups of 3 here. So this is going to be, give us 2 times 2, which is 4. So the cube root of 64 is 4. For C, we have the 4 to the power of 5 over 2. So again, the 5 is going to stay with the 4. The 2 is going to become your index. So we're going to do the square root of 4 raised to the 5th power. Again, you could also do the square root of 4 
to the fifth power like this. Totally up to you. I know that the square root of 4 is 2. And then if I raise 2 to the fifth power, I'm going to have 32. If you did the other way, you'd have to do 4 to the fifth power, which is 1,024. So this would be the square root of 1,024. Then you, time, you take the prime factorization of that, which I really don't feel like doing right now, and then you'd work that way. Like I said, totally up to you, whichever way you want to do it. I just prefer doing it the first way that we that I just I just showed you. For D, we have 625 raised to the three fourths. So again, the three is going to stay with the 625. The four is going to be your index. So we're going to do the fourth root of 625 raised to the third power. So the fourth root of 625, we know that 625 is 5 times 125, and 125 is 5 times 25, and 25 is 5 times 5. So this is now 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. We're looking for a group of 4. We have a group of 4, so we're going to pull 1 out of it, and then we're going to raise it to the third power. 5 cubed is 125. If we look at example four, we're writing each expression using rational exponents. So we're going to do the same thing here, but work backwards. If we can simplify these exponents or simplify these expressions, we are doing so. So if we look at example A, we have the fourth root of seven cubed. So remember, the three is the um, numerator of that fraction. So four goes underneath. So this is going to be seven to the power of three fourths. We can't simplify that fraction, so we're just leaving it as 7 to the power of 3 fourths. For b, we have the cube root of 11 to the sixth power. So again, we're going to pull that 3 as the denominator, and we're going to have 11 to the power of 6 over 3, or 6 divided by 3, which is 2. So that's 11 squared, which we know is 121. For C, we have the fourth root of 81 cubed. So again, we're going to take that 4, bring it over, make it the denominator of 3 over 4. From there, we're going to have 81 to the power of 3 fourths. Then we're done. We can't simplify that fraction, so that's it. For D, we have the cube root of 10 to the ninth power. So again, that 9 is going to be the numerator. We're going to take that 3, make it the denominator. So this is going to be 10 to the power of 9 over 3, which is 10 to the third power. And 10 to the third power is 1,000. For our next example, we have the fourth root of 5 squared. So again, bring the 4 over. Make it the denominator. This is going to be 5 to the, one, to the 2 over 4. The 2 over 4 can simplify to be 1 half. So that's 5 to the power of 1 half. And you can't take the square root of 5, so we're just going to leave it. For f, we have the cube root of 8 to the 4th power. So this is going to become, put that 3 under the 4. So 8 to the power of 4 over 3. If we look at the next part, these are all of our rules for our exponents here, okay? So if we have a power raised, or a t number raised to a power times a number raised to another power, we're adding those. If it's a number raised to a power over the same number raised to another power, we're subtracting. If it's power raised to a power, we're multiplying. If it's something that's multiplying inside parentheses and that the set of parentheses is raised to a power, then both terms inside the parentheses get raised to that power. If the fraction being raised to that power outside the parentheses, then both top and bottom of that fraction get raised to a power. If it's a, a number raised to a negative power, remember, take the reciprocal. If it's a fraction and your denominator is raised to a power, take the reciprocal. If we look at example 5a, we have 25 to the 3 fifths times 25 to the 2 fifths. Remember, 
or multiplying here, our bases are the same, so add your exponents. We're going to keep the 25. We're going to add 3 over 5 plus 2 over 5. 3 plus 2 is 5. Keep it over the 5. Keep it as the exponent of 25. 5 over 5 is 1, so this is just 25 to the first power, which is 25. For B, we have 8 to the 1 third over 8 to the 2 thirds. Remember, base is the same. On top of each other, we are subtracting. So we have 8 to the power of 1 third minus 2 thirds. Denominators are the same, which I forgot to mention for the, for the one that we just did. So just to subtract the numerators. So this is going to be 8 to the negative 1 third. Remember, negative 1 third means take the reciprocal. So this is going to become 1 over 8 to the 1 third. Turn this into the radical. Make it the 3 go outside. The 1 stays with the 8. So this is going to be 1 over the cube root of 8. You can't keep the cube root of 8, or you can take the cube root of 8, which is 2. So this is just 1 over 2. got to remember to simplify whatever you have that radical. If you can't simplify that radical, multiply top and bottom as many times as that index says. So that way you have it multiplied in total by that index and then get rid of the radical. For C, we have 36 raised to the 3 eighths times 36 raised to the 1 eighth. So we're going to keep the 36. It's going to be raised to the 3 eighths plus the 1 eighths. Denom or, yeah, denominators are the same. Keep it. Add the, the numerators. So 36 to the 4 eighths. Simplify that fraction. It's going to be 1 half. So it's 36 to the 1 half, which is the square root of 36, which is 6. For D, we have negative 8 raised to the negative 1 third. Turn the negative into a positive first. So we're going to have 1 over negative 8 raised to the 1 third. The 3 is going to go on the outside. The 1 is going to stay with the negative 8. So this is going to be 1 over the cube root of negative 8. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. So this is just 1 over negative 8. Two, and that negative goes out in front or with the numerator of that fraction. For our last two examples, we have e, which is 5 to the power of 9 fourths over 5 to the power of 1 fourth. So we are going to keep the 5 and then subtract those exponents. So 5 to the 9 fourths minus the 1 fourth. Denominator is the same. Keep denominators subtract the numerators so there's going to be 5 to the 8 over 4 8 over 4 is 2 5 squared is 25 for f we have 10 to the power of 2 thirds raised to the third power so we're going to multiply these two those threes would cancel out so it's just going to be 10 to the second power Let's rewrite this so that way you see exactly what I'm doing. So it's going to be 10 to the 2 thirds times 3 over 1. So the 3's are going to cancel. We're just going to have 10 to the second power, there we go, which is 100.